Uh, good afternoon. Let us start our lecture today. So uh, last time we were um, trying to do the practice test. Uh, uh, so in this uh, test, you also only have one problem, um, and uh, it's not difficult because the problem in the test will be uh, similar to the previous one. Um, so in the previous, <coughs> in the previous. Uh, uh, in the previous class, we found um, eigenvalues for this problem. This is equal to lambda n, phi n. And um, we found that phi n is sinus of, so this is on 1, 3. And of course, the boundary condition will be phi n at 1 is equal to phi and phi, and is zero. So we found that uh, the solution should be sinus of n pi log t, right? and the lambda n will be minus n squared pi squared. Right? This is where we stopped last time. Last time we tried to solve this eigenvalue problem. This is where phi n second plus t t prime, uh, phi n prime, is equal to lambda n phi n, and we found uh, with the boundary condition, right, phi one um, and phi n, they're both zero. Uh, <clears throat> so we found that um, phi n should be of the form sinus n pi log t, right? Um, and lambda n should be minus n squared pi squared, which means that if you replace phi n here, you are gonna have t squared sinus of n pi log t, second plus t sinus of n pi log t prime, and this is equal to minus n pi square of sinus of n pi log t. Right, so this is what we found from the previous class. We also know that those phi n, uh, those functions are orthogonal, right? Um, so we know that <coughs> with the way W is 1 over T, um, you're going to have Pn, Pm, <coughs> the product with this way is 0 when n is different from M, which means that um, if you integrate from 1 to E, uh, Pn, X, uh, T, uh, Pm, T, uh, w, dt, you're gonna get zero. In other words, you have one, either from one to e of uh, sinus of n pi log t, sinus of n pi log t, one over t, dt, will be zero when n is different from m. <coughs> right? Um, so I explain again. Um, so in the previous class, um, we know that if we consider this uh, eigenvalue problem, uh, t squared pn second plus t pn prime is equal to lambda n pn on 1 to e, with zero by recognition at 0, at 1 and e. Um, we found pn is sinus of n pi log t and lambda n is minus n pi. Yes? Uh, were we using theta n instead of lambda n? Yes, thank you. So this is theta n. Um, can you sign the back of the book, please? Right? Um, which which means that if you uh, compute this quantity, t squared sinus of n pi log t second plus t sinus of n pi log t prime, then you get minus n square pi square sinus n pi uh, log t. Right? So in the previous class, we also um, know that the weight is 1 over t. All right, so the way it's 1 over t means that Pn and Pm, they're orthogonal with respect to this inner product with this one. In other words, if you integrate from 1 to e of sinus of Pn, this is Pn, and sinus of m pi log t, which is Pm, times this weight, then this should be 0. So basically, <coughs> so um, Pn from um, an orthogonal basis is 
Where's this? With respect to the inner product. with weight uh, W. Right? So which means that phi N forms an orthogonal basis uh, with this inner product whose weight is 1 over T. Right? In other words, any function, any continuous function, uh, any continuous function, can be expanded using this basis, the basis. All right? Which means that any continuous function can be expanded using this uh, basis phi n that we just found. Now, let us go back to the original <coughs> equation that we, um, we tried to solve. So we we are solving uh, <coughs> this where um, say uh, what did I phi right phi second plus t phi prime uh, <coughs> uh, plus g phi phi zero with phi zero uh, phi one <coughs> equal to phi and this is zero and the g phi is uh, log t <coughs> on one square root of b and zeros elsewhere. Right, so this is the problem that we are trying to solve. <coughs> so we try to solve something similar. You have this way, phi second plus t phi prime plus gt is zero, in which gt is given to be log t on the interval from 1 to square root of e. And, and uh, it is 0 elsewhere. Right. right, so what is the next step? So we, we will expand, we expand u and g uh, using the basis, right? So we know that any continuous function can be expanded using this basis, right? Because this is, I mean, this is the, the theorem and I will prove it, but after you file, this is the theorem, right? So this is in the uh, this is in the property of of the sum limit eigenfunction that uh, we mentioned in the first uh, uh, lectures about sum limit eigenfunction. So all of the sum limit eigenfunction can be used as a basis, a orthogonal basis, to expand all of the continuous function. All right. Um, so now we're gonna expand u and g using this basis, right? So we're gonna use u is going to be a n uh, u t is going to be the sum when n is going from one to infinity of a n p n t, right? And g t will be the sum when n is going from one to infinity of bn, pnt. <coughs> right, so, right? Because according to the property of some living eigen functions, any continuous function can be expanded using this basis. Uh, and this I didn't prove, but we accept that because this uh, is required a lot of functional analysis. Now, the next step is to expand u using this basis. So I'm gonna expand u. Um, as a and p n. And because u is the unknown, we have to find u. Uh, no, not u, this is phi. Um, we have to find n. 
But um, we can also expand. This is V. Um, so now I'm going to expand G in terms of this basis. So how can I compute the coefficient of G? Yes? Should be AN divided by beta N? Uh, not yet. Forget about AN. How can I compute BN directly from here? Yes? So uh, inner product of PN, PN, what times the weight divided by yes. uh, you know, times the weight squared? Yes, can you sign the microwave of this? So we, we use the fact that they're orthogonal, right? We use the fact that all of these guys are orthogonal, right? So suppose that I want to compute BN. So this is B1, P1T plus B2, P2T plus BN, PNT, right? All right, so to compute <coughs> first time BN, I'm going to inner product G with PN with respect to the W. So I'm going to have B1, P1, Pn, with respect to this W, plus B2, P2, Pn, with respect to this W, plus Bn, Pn, Pn, with respect to this W. All right? Now I'm going to in the product. So what happens? Yes? Everything cancels out except for the Pn, Pn. Yes, can you say the microscope of this? Because of these things, this is zero. This is zero, except that this is not zero, right? Because of the orthogonality. So, so Gn, Pn, W will be Bn, Pn, Pn of W, right? So Bn will be G, Pn W, dividing by Pn, Pn W, right? So, so what is G phi n of u? It's the integral from 1 to e of G of T times phi n of T times w. So 1 over G of T. Yes, can you sign the microphone of this? So this is going to be the integral from 1 to e of G and T of phi n T times w dt. So this is going from, uh, to be the integral from 1 to e of gt times phi n, which is sinus of uh, n pi of t. Sinus of n pi of t, right, times 1 over t dt. Right? So what is gt? Yes? Uh, L of t from? One, two, two square root of t, right? Can you sign the back of paper, please? So you're going to use this guy, right? So this is going to be one integral from 1 to e, right? A block t. Sinus of n pi block t, 1 over t dt, plus the integral from square root of t to e of 0. Right? Now I can plug the value of g there because g is going to be log t from 1 to square root of t. I'm going to integrate here from 1 to square root of t. Right? And the other part is from square root of t of e to e. This is going to be 0. So this is 0. Right? So this is 0. Now, how can I compute this integral? Yes? Can you substitution where um, the, uh, u is L of t? Yes, can you sign back the paper, please? Yeah. Um, so now we change the variable, right? So you replace 1 over t with y. Okay, so um, so dy, uh, so ah uh, uh, no, no, so you replace y to be log t, which means that dy will be log t prime dt, and this is one over t dt, right? 
Um, so this gives this give me the integral of y times sine s of n pi y um, dy. Right, so what is the interval here? Yes? Uh, and LM what? Root um, the square root of E. That's and this is? Um, sorry, mm, no. mm, yes? <coughs> One half. One half, yes. Right, so can you sign it back into the um, so when um, when t is zero, so y, uh, when t is one, y is log one and this is zero. So when t is square root of t, y is log of square root of t, and this is one half. So here I have the integral from zero to one half. This is the integral that I want to compute, right? I explain again. Um, now because we know that phi n. Uh, is an orthogonal basis. You can expand any continuous function using this basis, right? So which means that the solution can be expanded on this basis and the GT can also be expanded on this basis. Uh, now, I suppose that I uh, expand GT on this basis like B1, P1, plus P2, P2, plus BN, PN. Um, I want to compute coefficient BN. I use the orthogonality, right? So I, in the product, G with the n w uh, and every everything will be zero except this term. So B n will be G V n over P n V n. Now I have to compute. Right? So G V n will be integral from one to e of G V n W. So W will be one over T. Um, so so I so here I have one over T, V n is sinus s n pi log t. Um, so here I have sin s of n pi log t. Now I have to replace G, G T. So gt is log t from 1 to square root of e and 0 elsewhere, right? So from square root of t to e is going to be 0. So this is go, this goes away. So now to compute this integral, I have to do the change of variable, right? I'm going to put y to be log t. Then dy will be 1 over uh, t dt, which means that here you have dy. All right? Um, when t is 1, y is 0. So I put 0 here. When t is square root of e, y is 1 half. So I put 1 half here. Uh, log t will be y, and this is sinus n pi y dy, right? So how can I compute this integral? Yes. Doesn't the whole integral be multiplied by two? Uh, why do you multiply that by two? Because remember we had um, because it's like the natural log of t on one to square root e and then zero otherwise, so it's like technically it's it makes it even, right? So only there's half of it. No, because we have from one to square root, so there's no even and odd here. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. So if this is from minus one half to one half, yes, you have two times. But here it's only from one zero to one half. Right. 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 So now, how can I compute this uh, interval? Um, yes. New integration by parts by yes. setting y equal to u. Yes. Can you sign by paper of this? So we, we do integration by pipe, right? So you have u dv is ub minus v du. All right? In this case, um, I'm going to put, this is going to be dv, right? So this is u, and this is dv. So I'm going to have, this is the integral from 0 to 1, of 1 half of y, d of cosinus of n pi y minus over n pi. Right? So the sinus n pi y is the derivative of cos minus cosinus n pi y over n pi. Right? Um, now I'm going to plug the, the, uh, the integration of the formula there. I have cosinus n pi y over n pi. Um, then this is going to be to minus integral from 0 to 1 half of minus cosinus of n pi y over m pi dy. All right? So this is integration by pi, right? So this is u, this is dv, this is uv, and this is vdu. And here I have to evaluate 0 and 1. Right? 
So when I evaluate this guy, should be one half. Uh, one half. Yes, thank you. Can you sign back to please? Um, so now I have to evaluate zero and one half. So this guy gives me one half minus cosine s of n pi over two over n pi. Uh, uh, minus zero, have minus cosine of zero over n pi. So this is zero. This I can leave it there. Uh, now, for the next term, I'm going to have to compute the interval from zero to one half of uh, cosine of n pi y. Uh, so I, I put one over n pi outside. How can I compute this interval? Yes? Yes. Can you sign the back of paper, please? So this guy, I leave it there because this has multiple values. So I don't care. So this is cosine of n pi over 2, over 2 n pi. So there's a minus outside. This is here. So the other guy will, will give you 1 over n pi square. And then you have sine of n pi evaluated at 0 and 1. So this gives you minus cosine of n pi over 2 over 2 n pi plus, so 0 is going away, and uh, you have sine of n pi over 2 over n pi squared. Right? I don't compute because it gives me several uh, values. Questions? <coughs> Right, so after I compute this, I plug this guy to here. Right, so I plug this guy here, so I have sine of n pi over <coughs> 2 times uh, 1 over n pi square, and then minus cosine of n pi over 2 n pi. Right. Questions? Explain again. So in this, uh, the first computation, we have to remember that they are orthogonal with respect to this weight, one over t, right? So this is why when you do the integration, you have to multiply with one over t. And if you don't multiply with one over t, you will not be able to compute it. Because the key is again to put y is log t, right? So when you put y is, uh, is log t, the y will become one over t dt. And, and this is why here you have one over t. And this works because of that. Uh, now you do a change variable, log t, the interval becomes zero, the interval from zero to one half of y sine as n pi uh, dy, and this can be done by integration by power. Questions? It's good? So now let us compute the second term. the second term which is Vn Vn W. So what is Vn Vn W? Yes? Vn. What? Vn Vn. Vn Vn. Vn is zero. Right? So, so if Vn and Vm is zero because they are orthogonal. So the only thing which is not orthogonal is Vn Vn because a vector cannot be orth uh, orthogonal with itself, right? So all of these guys, Vn Vm, they're orthogonal, so it's zero. The only thing that is not zero is Vn Vn, right? So one cannot be orthogonal with itself, but it's, it's orthogonal with everyone else, right? Uh, so so what is Vn Vn W? Yes? So this gives me interval from 1 to e of sine of n pi log t squared. So this is Vn. And then you have 1 over t dt, right? <coughs> right. So how can I compute this interval? 
Yes. Yes, can you uh, can you send back the paper, please? So again, here you're gonna use um, change of variable, right? Change of variable. Um, so you define y to be log t, then this guy will be dy. Right, so dy will be 1 over t dt. Um, right? So now, um, what is the, uh, the limits for y? What, what are the boundaries for y? Yes? Yes, can you sign back the paper, please? When t is 1, y is log 1, and this is 0. When t is e, y is log e, and this is 1. So basically, I can write this integral in the point form. We have the integral from 0 to 1 of centers of n pi square dy. All right? Is it good? Questions? I explain again. So to compute this guy, the key is always to do the change of variable. Um, you uh, introduce a new variable y, which is log t. So dy will be 1 over t dt. So this is dy, right? When t is 1 here, y is going to be 0. When t is e, y is 1. So this is why here I replace zero, uh, 1 by 0 and e by 1, right? So this is sinus n pi y squared. And I have to, to integrate this guy. How can I integrate this guy? Yes? Can you say it back the paper, please? Um, so we use the formula that sinus x squared will be 1 minus cosinus of 2x over 2. Right? So I apply this uh, formula here. I have the integral from 0 to 1 uh, of 1 minus cosinus of 2 and pi y over 2. And I take dy. Right? Sinus squared is 1 minus cosinus 2 times over 2. Right? So how can I continue? Yes? Can I just split the integral with the uh, integral from 0 to 1 for 1 half and then minus 0 to 1 uh, cosine of 2 and 5. Yes, so so now I'm going to split this integral, right? Can you sign back and split paper, please? So I'm going to split this, this integral. So I have integral from 0 to 1, uh, 1 half dy, and minus 1 half integral from 0 to 1, uh, cosine of 2 and pi y. Dy. So what is the value of the first interval? Yes, can you say back to paper, please? So the first interval gives you one half. And how can I compute the second one? Yes? Yes, can you say back to paper, please? So now I'm going to, uh, for the second one, I'm going to use sinus up 2 and pi y divided by 2 and pi and I evaluate at 0 and 1, so this is 0. Right, we can say sinus 2, uh, n pi is 0, and sinus 0 is 0. So basically, this gives me 1 half. So here, I replace this by 1 half. All right? So this is Bn. Right, so... Uh, Bn and we have to um, to uh, go back to the uh, the equation, right? So we have what we have one plus uh, t squared, uh, three second plus plus t in prime uh, plus is equal to minus gt, right? Right. So. So we, we have all of the coefficient of of of, uh, of the right side. So you have minus p and p n. This is the sum when n is going from one to infinity. Right. So what is the next step? Yes. 
Uh, back on the answer for B of Bn, shouldn't that cosine term be n pi over 2? n pi over 2, yes. For the cosine term. Cosine s is, no, because, no, because there you use, uh, I think you, you use, this is n pi, right? I don't remember. Can I see? The range was from 0 to 1 half. Um, Yes, thank you. Can you sign by the perfect of this? So this is n pi over 2. This is n pi over 2, right? All right, so so what is the next step? Yes? Uh, you can do it to Vt that you expanded. Yes, can you sign the microphone for this? So I'm going to use this, these things, right? You will see that an is bn over lambda, uh, over theta. But I'm going to show you in minutes. Uh, minus Vn over theta, right? So I'm going to have one. I have, um, so now, what is Vn prime now? Now, suppose that Vn <coughs> is this series. What is Vn prime? Vn, suppose that I have this series. How can I do, take the derivative of series? <coughs> yes? Shouldn't we now have theta and... Um, no, no, not yet, not yet. I'm trying to prove that. Uh, so, I have phi n is this series. And I want to take the derivative of this series. How do I take the derivative of this series? It's just the derivative of the inside. Yeah. Like still sign. Yes, can you send back the paper of this? I just have to take the derivative of the guys inside, right? So this gives me a n, and it's going from 1 to infinity of phi n prime, right? So I have a series, and I take the derivative, which is just the uh, derivative of the guys inside. Now I multiply that with t. That's give me what? I have a series, I multiply series with t. What is it? Yes? Uh, t yes, can you have back paper like this? Right, so I have a sum, and I multiply the sum with the t, then it which means that I, I, I multiply every one with the, the t, <coughs> right? So now I want to take the second derivative. What is it? Yes? Yes, can you sign the back of paper, please? So now I'm going to take the sum when n is going from 1 to infinity of a n, phi n second. Right? So so now I multiply this with this way. What, what is it? Yes? Uh, sum of a n squared times t n. Yes, can you sign the back of paper, please? So I just have to multiply inside with this way, right? Now, if I want to take a sum of the two guys there, what should I have? Mm, yes? Should be g of t or negative g of t? No, no, not yet, not yet. <laughs> I just want to sum the series. So what do I get? Yes. Everything inside a n t squared for n prime. Yes, can you sign it by paper, please? Now I have everything inside, right? A n t square for n prime plus t for n prime, right? That's good. Right, so what can you see from this guy? What is um, t square for n second plus t for n prime? What is it? Yes? Who, who wants to, to answer? Yes? No, I'm, I just want to ask you, what is it? Yes, can you sign the microphone, please? So this is theta and Vn. 
right? Because this is taken as a problem, right? So we, we know that T Pn second plus T Pn prime is T Pn Pn. Right? This is what we solve. This is the meaning of the stem Lewin eigen values, uh, eigen function, right? This guy is going to be Pn uh, uh, T Pn. So this gives me someone from one to infinity of a n, theta n, p n. Right, so this is p plus t squared p second. And this is also minus g, g t, right, from the beginning. And this is someone n, when n is going from infinity to uh, minus p n, p n. So what can you say about the relation between a n and p n, uh, and b n? Yes? Yes, can you say on the back of paper, please? So now, after this step, I replace t square p second plus t p prime by theta and p n. All right? So this sum, uh, this guy will be a n theta and p n, but we also know that uh, minus g t is the sum when n is going from 1 to infinity of minus b and p n, which means that this coefficient has to be equal to this coefficient, right? So a n, theta n will be minus p n, right? So a n is minus p n over theta n, and and now I have this p n, right? So I have this p n, which is one over n pi square of sinus of n pi over two minus cosines of n pi over 2 uh, uh, times 1 over 2 n pi and I have to multiply with 2 because I divide my my, my, my the other guy by 1 half um, so theta n now is p n squared so this is a n okay. Um, right, so I explain again. I explain again. Um, uh, after I explain GT, I have all of the coefficient BN. Right? So the idea is again to expand PT, right? And we compute the coefficient AN. So how do we compute the coefficient AN? I just have to plug everything back to this form. And after you plug everything back into this form, you see that p prime will be a n, uh, p n prime, t p prime will be a n, t p n prime, p t square p second will be a n, t square p n prime uh, second. So now, when you take a sum, you get a n t square p n second plus t p n prime. So this guy gives you theta and p n, right? And so, so now, but you know that this is equal to minus b n, uh, Pn, which means that An theta n is equal to minus Bn, and An is minus Bn over theta n, right? So then you can compute the um, An. So this is exactly like in the Laplace uh, operator case, right? So you also have An is Bn over lambda, right? So it's exactly the same. Uh, so in, in two cases. Questions? <coughs> 